Hey, welcome back to the Lick of the Week videos. It's been a while since I've had a chance to do any, but uh, I've got a Lick of the Week uh, group on Facebook, and we were talking about some topics that, you know, maybe we could cover in the videos in the future. And the topic of playing blues in melodic style came up, and I got my wheels to turning in the head, and I thought, well, I've covered a lot of melodic style stuff. I've covered a couple of bluesy sounding licks in melodic style, probably. It's just licks. And I've talked about the blues and and how the blues operates on the fingerboard, pentatonic minor scales, blues scales, what they are. But I don't think I've ever really made any videos putting the two together. So let's just go with that. That's a good topic. So there's kind of two prerequisites that you need uh, to kind of get this whole thing going. You have to understand how melodic style works and you have to understand the blues scale. So I'm going to assume in this video that you already know what the basic blues scale is and how it functions on the fingerboard and you know melodic style. So let's talk about putting them together. So you know one of the uh, parameters of uh, melodic style is you want notes to kind of flow over each other with the sustain of one note going over the other. So when you play you know just normal scales like a G scale kind of want those notes to bleed over each other and gets that beautiful cascading effect. Unfortunately, the way you're tuned in G, even in G blues patterns, which you would think would be really conducive on the fingerboard because, hey, we're tuned to G, right? This, is, this should be like falling off a log. <laughs> the problem is, you know, your blues, G blues scale has an F, a B flat, and a D, D is in David, D flat. So those three notes are not found on the fingerboard open as far as an open string. So when you play a G scale, you have G open, you have an A fretted, B open, C fretted, D open. The only place you have to kind of double up is E and F sharp because you don't have an E or an F sharp open. And then G open could be the fifth. And I know you can't see my hands over here very well, but. Um, so when you play the blues scale melodically, you're looking for an F, you're looking for a B flat and D flat too, if you want to use that note. So that means you're going to have to be using some kind of quirky positions at time because you're looking for notes that are not open. So G major scale flows up and down the neck beautifully. Everything seems really logical because it is because you're taking advantage of the open G tuning. Blue scales, not so much. So let's just experiment with some stuff. And you don't have to play the blues scales in any kind of particular order because we're just trying to make interesting bluesy sounding patterns. And try to think of the blues in context as being like an Oreo cookie where maybe the cookie part is a major scale note from the key you're in, G major scale. And then the white stuff could be a blues scale note and you could double stack it, triple stack it, you know, like the Oreo cookies in the grocery store, or you could double triple stack uh, the regular cookie part because they could be regular scale notes because the blues really only sounds bluesy in a context so you have to have context so you wouldn't want to just necessarily play F B flat D flat F B flat D flat those three notes mixed up continually gets to be kind of boring and they don't really connect to the key that you're in because that's G major and the scale G major. So what you wind up doing is mixing blue scales and non-blue scale notes together. So let's try that and try to get that flowing sound. Here's D. Then I'm going to go to F. G open. I'm going to go up here for B flat. Here's C, non-blue non scale, but G scale note. D open. Here's F, second string. Fifth string open. Here's B flat first string at uh, 8 and then go here to B flat again if I want to start over somewhere else or I could go to D C which is you know same note we use here a octave higher and then I can mix it up any way I want flat five in there we haven't used the D flat note yet there's a couple places where you can use D flat you know 
Okay. So let's see if we can mix that in there. And what's going to happen is in certain places in this pattern thing that you're doing, you're going to hear some chromaticism. So if I play D flat and then D, yeah, the D flat sounds bluesy. You know, it will sound bluesy. But the D major doesn't sound bluesy, but when you play them side by side, you get kind of a bluesy dissonant kind of thing happening, which is kind of cool. And some of the more famous bluegrass licks of the last, say, 20 years, the uh, postmodern period of bluegrass, you'll, you'll have patterns like this, and of course it'll be stroke style single string, melodic and everything, but here's some low position. <laughs> Stuff like that that you hear you. Clinch mountain back step, songs like that take advantage of the kind of uh, pentatonic minor scale that relates to the key that you're in. Kind of a mixolydian thing happening but it's bluesy that's all we need to think about so uh again if you want to, this to sound like the classic say here's a ben eldridge uh some kind of ben eldridge thing now what ben will do is add some chromaticism Again, which is just adding a half step note a half, and it could be the major note that was replaced and so you can think about chromaticism sometimes as being the note that you replaced in the G scale like the F was F sharp in the scale flat 3 flat 5 flat 7 is your basic you know blues pattern so the F and the F sharp the B flat and the B the D flat and the D if you put those notes in there in places and you get a little chromaticism so that will allow your blues to kind of be melodic style and that flowing you hear how the notes bleed over each other that's also a classic sound in you know postmodern whatever you want to call it modern period over the last 20 25 years you hear a lot of this but it actually harkens back to the 70s, late 60s, Ben Eldridge and guys like that. Bobby Thompson, Bill Keith were doing things like that, you know, up into the late 60s. So you just hear maybe more prevalent in a lot of compositions in modern bluegrass where players where it becomes all blues all the time kind of thing. Um, but some of the early players, the pioneers, were doing things like this, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Almost. So what you want to do is just practice. If you can find a combination of notes that goes from fretted to open. So if I went from, say, the open B flat, I'm sorry, the fretted B flat note, four string at eight is B flat. And then I went to a D note, open. And then I went to this F note on the second string at six. And then the open first, which is D. be considered a melodic blues pattern over G because if I play this over G chromaticism but again what's going to really classify it as being melodic style blues is that characteristic flowing sound so you have to work on your technique because some of these patterns are going to kind of be what the, what the old guy told me one time. It's a knuckle buster. <laughs> so you're going to have to muscle your way through some of the positions. And if you want to experiment with a little chromaticism. Ben Eldridge from the 70s. B to B flat, uh, B, I'm sorry, B to D flat, 
which is kind of a weird transition because again B the B note is a happy scale note B flat is the blues note but Ben we put it in there because he thought it sounded cool so but again I'll keep you know being a broken record I'll hark back to you could you should concentrate on the F the B flat and the D flat and mixing that with some other regular G scale tones first and maybe stay away from too much chromaticism at first if you're new to this but if you're already playing a bunch of melodic scales major scales and melodic licks they're just major scale licks then you should just branch out and start interjecting these notes just replace F sharp with F B with B flat and then D major with a D flat note and then you'll have some blues patterns happening and if you want to enhance this even more slide in the notes and that's the way to kind of put in a little subtext of greasiness a little you know that's a half step slide so it's kind of like a different way to put some chromaticism pull off your flat five so I have a B flat a C and in front of C is obviously C sharp slash D flat remember D flats our flat five that's our alteration from the G scale tricky thing is going to be even though this is melodic style check a box you can say okay I know how melodic style basically works I understand the blue scale check I'm tuned in G check this should be easy well it kind of is at first but then you run into these weird positions because again the notes that you're altering from your G scale are not found on the fingerboard in an open configuration there's no open F no open B flat no open D flat so you have to know where those notes are. And the only thing that's really going to constitute this or identify this as being, hey, this is melodic style blues, is your right hand approach and your fretting approach to make those notes sustain over each other. a few segments of notes that are single string you know well you have to you can kind of do what you do it's still you're still operating in melodic style pretty much but you just have to kind of muscle through to get some of those chromatic notes in there and you can tell they make the blues a little bluesier but if you get too crazy with it can turn into circus music <laughs> so you know just concentrate on those fundamental three notes the flat three flat five flat seven mix it with some regular G scale notes think about how you already play a G scale and then just start randomly going in and out of the notes try different things you can't really do anything wrong you might just find something you don't like particularly you know that much for what you're trying to accomplish and then you might hit on some fantastic sounding things you know and that's a good way to explore the blues but just remember we're trying to meld the blues with that flowing melodic thing so hopefully this little primer will help you in the next video maybe we can look at uh, some other keys some of them lay out pretty well on the banjo and some of them don't you know and that's where your capo might come into play if you want to keep that smooth flowing sound going but we'll we'll look at a couple of other keys maybe in the next video Appreciate you watching. See you next time.